video is going to be making a spool piece like this. We're going to put a flange on one end first and square it up and then we will put the other flange on and square it up and we will do what they call two holing it. So this is not part of the NCCER curriculum but this is something you will be using and skill you will need out in the field. So to start with I just wanted to explain a little bit on the flanges. We talked about this phonographic finish where the gasket fits against during gaskets and O-rings. So we want that undisturbed. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but somebody has ground this one. That's going to affect it. If we get into a high pressure situation, that's going to be a flange that we can no longer use because it is damaged. Another example, this is the spool pieces we've been talking about and bolting up in some of the other performance emails. If you look at the end of this one, when somebody tacked this, they tacked it and they got the weld out on the face of the flange. You aren't going to get that to see. It. So again, that's not going to be how we do it. All the tacking we are going to do is going to be on the outside of the pipe and the outside of the flange. We are not going to do anything in here. When you make one of these for real out in the field, you will weld it up 100% inside and outside. But for our examples down here, we're going to break them apart and reuse all these pieces. So we're not going to be worried about that. We're just going to put four tacks on here. Okay, the first thing that we do, we want it to be 12 inches from the face of the flange to the face of the flange. So we start with a pipe. And these pipes have been pre-cut and they're in the box. This pipe is going to be 11 and a half inches long. That's right on the edge. That, I wouldn't go any longer with those pipes. That only gives you a quarter inch of play on each end here. And if you're making this up out in the field, your quarter inch are going to fill that up pretty easily and you don't want to get any of that weld on there. So when I cut it, I usually cut it about 11 and a quarter inches, give myself 3 eighths of an inch on each end. But we'll work with what we have here and it's not a big deal. So at this point, the first step is always going to be start with this pipe level. And we're going to set the level on there. And obviously I've preset it. We would flip the level around to make sure it's reading accurately. And it is in the center of the bubble on each side. Okay, next step. We are going to put this on here. We don't really worry about it right now too much. The main thing we're looking for is about a quarter inch of distance on the end here. So that we have the right measurement. At this point, some people will start putting bolts in and stuff like that just to get your two hole close but we can always change that as we go forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my gloves on so when I go to tack I don't burn myself. Double check my pipe again and then I'm going to check this. We are going to plumb this to here. Well when I weld this it's going to kick it like that. So I want it with the bubble a little bit that way because when I put heat here, it's going to kick it out like that. So my main distance is right there. That's where I want it. Get my welding hood on. Welder's preset. Now when you're doing your tacks, you don't want to put too big a tacks on because it will pull the flange on you. So as we do this, always keep wiping that off. And see now we're just a hair out. We're going to need to, one, not drop the level, but two, we need to adjust that in just a little bit. A lot of times, use a three pound sledge or the Allen or the ball pin you have in your toolbox, and we'll put it there. I'm going a little bit more 
It's a little bit on this side of the bubble because when I heat that up, it'll pull it in, which will again kick it out that way. So at this point, I have it tacked on the top. I'm going to put a tack down here at the bottom. Okay. Now, we should be square. We're level or plumb this way. We're level this way. Okay? Now comes the hard part. We are going to take the square and we're going to hold it up against this flange and now we're going to see if the flange is square this way or that way. The way we do that, so we hold that square against there and then we take a tape measure and we measure the distance in between the inside of the square, three and nine sixteenths, on both ends of the pipe. About three and five eighths on this side, and we want to be in the center of the pipe and take a measurement on each spot. Double check our squareness against the flange. If it's the same distance on this end that it is on this end, then we are square. So, like we always say, measure twice, cut once. I'm about three and five eighths, and here I'm at about three and a half. So, with it being further this way, I'm going to have to change the change my flatness of my flange if it's here at three and five eighths and here at three and a half then my flange is tilted just a little bit this way I have to make it obvious like this so you can see it I just want to start tapping over here I don't want to hit that face then I'll put my square back up Make sure it's flat against the face of the flange. About three and nine sixteenths. Three and nine sixteenths. At that point, I'm gonna put a tack in here again on this side. At this point, you can go to this side and double check it, or I can get the same measurement over here again. If it's over here, should be the same. Make sure my tack didn't pull. I'm down to three and a half there. I'm still at about three and nine sixteenths there. So again, I need to pull it a little bit. Because the weld pulled it that way. And I can check this side too. It doesn't matter how you do it. Yeah, we can put the square up against there. And two and a sixteenth. Oops. And two and a sixteenth. I think my square moved on me a little bit. Two and an eighth. And two and an eighth. So you double check, and then we'll put our last tack on here. And now it would be secure, and we would be able to, once we get the other end on there, then we could weld it out and know it's not going to move. So I'm going to make another video when we do the other end. So I'm going to 
pause it here. If you have any questions, contact me.